Okay, so good morning. We're class is 21st century skills, and there are going to be like three main sections to this class. And you can see this in your in your folders. Uh, by the way, did anybody get a folder for the young fellow who forgot this? Anybody else forgot their folder? Again, the oh, there's another young lady here that doesn't have a folder. Um, and uh, you folder. Again, please. Oh, Jesus, guys. What do I have to do? Tattoo it on your forehead? Come on. Okay, we, three guys over here need their... Come prepared. That's one of the first things you need to learn in life is be prepared. You go to your job and you forget the stuff you're supposed to do at work. Do you think your, your boss is going to be very forgiving? He's paying you good money to be prepared and do your job. This is some training, a small bit of personal discipline. If you're coming to class, you know what you've got to bring. If all there isn't something to write with. So let's go back again. Three components. Components. What are the pieces, if you will, of 21st century skills? Why do we need these skills in the 21st century? And what are the broad outcomes if we do them properly? What's going to be the results? So that's what we'll be covering today. Um, please feel free to take notes in your folders. That's what they're there for. And let's go into the main body of the introduction material. Now, I suppose you could leave the camera there, but that first section is for Ken. This is regular stuff. Okay? So, and the introduction. 21st century skills. The entire world is what is the era of intense transformation in all areas. Education, trade, global trade, society. We know that things are speeding up. We know how chaotic things are. But that, that means that we're going to have to have a set of skills in order to be able to deal with this fast-paced, multi-dimensional society in which we live. Okay? And part of this, the very first part, is discipline. Thinking. Like, make sure you, as we said earlier, that you are prepared for what you're going to be doing. This is, this is a, a very good introduction to personal discipline. That's very, very important. You know, pay attention. It's always better to have something you don't need than need it and not have it. Okay, so we talked about this recently, the pandemic is also throwing challenges. Individuals to cope with the impacts, the stress of illness of people maybe close to us that are, you know, maybe very sick. In, in addition to that, we have all the other pressures of life that we have to deal with. Right now, it's your schooling and, you know, your, your friends and society and all the stuff that we are trying to do to be able to fit ourselves in and, and, and become a, a, a useful piece of that society puzzle. These are not easy things. You know, when I was growing up, nobody ever told me this stuff. I had to kind of stumble along and fall down an awful lot and learn it the hard way. I'm hoping that the information that we're gonna share in this class, if you can, again, pay attention to it, read it, ask questions if you don't understand or you want an additional explanation. Do you have a unique opportunity that all other schools don't, are not teaching? Um, and, and so take advantage of this because it, it forms the, the platform or the foundation from which all your other activities in life are going to be based. Okay? So, during such times, we need a lot of different skills build skill sets that will enable an individual to cope up and succeed facing the challenges in real life, leading to this holistic. Holistic means complete. It means all these different 
pieces of the puzzle are in their proper place. Okay, so we get the whole picture. Now, <clears throat> these skills, we try to address them in what you call the 21st century skills. Why 21st century? Because we know that just in the recently, in the last 20, 30 years, look how dramatically things have changed. You know, look at the internet, look at you know, all these, these new techniques and tech tools for communication, for you know, social welfare, and, and the, the whole world has shrunk. We no longer live in isolated societies on the planet. You know, we find that just with the tap of a key or a button, you know, we're connected with somebody on the other side of the world. This is all new. And to be able to fit these things in the right place is going to be very, very important as we move into the future. So what we're trying to do, in effect, is give you a heads up um, on, on what it is that you're going to be facing and some tools and techniques and how to deal with it. So, the 21st century skills are required by an individual for what we call that holistic development, or that means that integrated, where well, all these pieces aren't just scattered about in our life, but knowing where they fit, and then knowing how and when to use them. Critical skills, okay? so that we can contribute to our own personal development and progress, as well as to our society as a whole. We do not live in isolation. We are a part of a larger picture. And knowing where we fit and how we should be acting in our piece of that picture is very important. It makes life easier for us. The world doesn't care if you get it. It really doesn't. It'll roll right over the top of you without a look back. So if you can see that light at the end of the tunnel and determine whether it's the end of the tunnel or a freight train headed right for your head, that's to your advantage. So this helps you get those distinctions by giving you more tools to work with. Now, 21st century skills refer to a broad set of knowledge, skills, habits, and character traits. Remember, holistic, all these pieces. By this, by educators, school reformers, college professors, these are the guys that put this stuff together. Very knowledgeable people. Now, what I bring to the table is, yes, I'm an educator, but I've lived my life out in the world, boots on the ground, traveling around the world, you know, doing things. I wasn't in a classroom my whole life. I mean, I was out there slugging it out with, with life. So what I try to bring to you are practical experience. Not, not simply like academic theories or ideas, but how does that actually work if you're out in the world and you, and you face this particular situation or you have this um, uh, circumstance come up in your life? What do you do, practically speaking? Now, <clears throat> the, the main skills, survival skills, uh, and I think that's well put. The main survival skills are made these in your, in your handouts because it's going to be impossible for you to read this from where you're at. So please follow along with me in your material. Critical thinking and problem solving. Collaboration and leadership. How do you work together or how do you lead if, you, if you're in that position? Agility and adaptability. Very important. How do you maneuver in situations without getting stuck in one spot? Move according to the need of that moment and circumstance. That's agility. Initiative and entrepreneurship. 
Cancer has, that's his big thing, is he's an incredibly successful man. Entrepreneurship, self-starting, self-motivated, self-initiating, you know, moving forward, having a plan, executing the plan, no excuses. You know, if you mess up, you mess up. Say, yep, I messed up. Nothing wrong with that. Because we have to know our limitations, accept them, and then only then can we reduce them. Only then are we able to take these limitations and turn them into assets. But we've got to acknowledge them first. Hiding from them doesn't work. Because you may try to hide from them, but the world is going to bring it out. Remember that where you are the weakest, that's where the world is going to challenge you. Okay? Keep that in mind. Initiative. Being able to try something. Whether it works or not, doesn't matter. But at least you stepped up. Okay? At least you tried. I would rather have somebody step up and fail a hundred times then somebody sit back and criticize what somebody else is doing. The first person is useful. The second person is useless. They are of no value. All you can do is sit and criticize. Somebody who's trying, look at yourself carefully. Because you're not doing anything but dragging yourself down. You know, help others. When that person has stepped up, <clears throat> whether they're they make mistakes or not, support them because they had the courage and the initiative to step up to the plate and take a swing at the ball. That's a baseball analogy for, for cricket. For those of you who are cricket, cricket ears. <laughs> Sounds like old Disney. <laughs> anyway, um, effective oral and written communication. Critical. Because if we want to get anything accomplished, how do we communicate an idea to someone else? Right? So in order to do that, we have to have the tools. Language, grammar, writing skills. Could be computer skills. That's a thing for communication written. Can you take your thoughts and write them on paper? Or type them into a computer, doesn't really matter but you get them out of your head and into another medium. So others can then know what you're thinking. This, so I cannot overemphasize effective oral and written communications because we're not isolating. We're not just sitting here alone. We are interacting with others in our families, our friends, our teachers, our bosses at work. How are we interacting? You know, this is so important that you come up with correct grammar, correct way of speaking and writing. When I was young, I couldn't write very well when I was in high school, grade, up through grade 12. I went into the United States Marines and I got a severe dose of discipline of, of what you should do and how you should do it. And when I got out of military, I immediately started college again. And I realized my weakest area was communication. Not so much speech, but writing. And I had to work very, very hard in order to, because I knew I needed it, in order to be better at it. Well, as I got into the world of business, I was in information technology for, I don't know, 45 years or more. And as I moved along in my career, you do less and less doing and more and more communicating. And when you have to write a budget, you have to write up a proposal, you have to do an outline of a project that you want to do, you can only do that if it can, you can communicate these ideas effectively. Because if you, this is how you convince people, is through effective communication. No? So that's, that's very, very important. Um, accessing and analyzing information. Today's world, particularly in this 21st century, 
The world runs on information. It runs on information. And not just here locally. We're talking about you're going to get information from all over the world that you have to somehow be able to organize, analyze, integrate in order to make it useful. This is where you're, you have multiple of these skills coming into play, like critical thinking, which is part analysis, you know, uh, accessing, you know, computer, people, papers, and then analyzing it. And of course, once you analyze it, analyzing means what's important, what is significant, do I have something that I'm doing, and what in this information that I have gotten is going to help me achieve this goal. So it's learning how to filter what is useful given this moment in time, this work, this project, and what is not so important. It's not that it's useless, no. It's just not important right now. There may be pieces that are going to be important later on, and knowing that you have them will give you another resource for another time. So never take anything for granted in saying, well, all this stuff is useless, but this one thing I can use. No, because the world moves forward, and there's going to be times, and I can tell you this for a fact, there will be times when you will remember something that you read and say, oh my goodness, where did I get that from? I've heard this before. And being able to find it quickly is again going to move you ahead faster and help you accomplish your goals. So being able to access, analyze, organize, and that's all part of this critical thinking thing here. These, a lot of these are linked together. They don't they're not separate, really, because you're going to find, depending upon the circumstance, you're going to find several of these are going to be, you know, certain skills of each one of these are going to be involved in, you know, a, a, a project, and they're going to change. So being familiar with all of these is going to help you to choose which ones are going to be appropriate for this circumstance, this problem, this project. Okay? So that's, that's the value of all of these. It's not just individually, but their integration at the right time. And that's, again, back where that critical thinking thing comes into play. Oh, come on. Oops. Uh, oh, and the last one here, curiosity and imagination. Always be curious. Always learn. I, it, one of the things that I've tried to do in my life is every day I try to learn at least one thing new. Never just sit back and think you know enough, because you never know enough. You don't know what life's going to throw at you. Do you? You're going to know when it's thrown. <laughs> You're going to know when it hits you. Now, the question is, is are you prepared? Are you prepared for that thing that comes across your plate? So curiosity, if you learn something new each day, you'll never know when that's going to come in handy. No knowledge is useless. No knowledge is useless. It's just where does it fit? Okay? Curiosity. And imagination. What is imagination? Thinking? Yes. But the, how thinking? It's thinking of things that may not be obvious, that you may, no one or you have never thought of before. It's creating an image, a thought, an idea. Imagination that you can pull from this great storehouse of intelligence, which is the universe, and then be able to use it in different areas where you can use it to your benefit. But don't be limited to what somebody else has thought up. Don't be limited by that. It doesn't matter if you pull out something that sounds absolutely crazy. 
I mean, look at Elon Musk, for example. All of you know him, right? This multi-billionaire who creates starships and electric cars and stuff like that. He's, he comes up with ideas that everybody else thought was impossible. But now he's got these <clears throat> incredible rockets that are bigger and more, more complex than anybody could conceive of. And he's doing things that everybody else told him, you're crazy, you'll never get that done. But he's doing it because he was curious and he used his imagination and he would not listen to the people that said, you're crazy, this will never work. Never ever listen to somebody if they're negative. Take into consideration what they're saying and make sure that if they have a valid objection, fine. But if they're just throwing stones to throw stones, ignore them. Ignore them. And go ahead and try your ideas. The worst that could happen is it doesn't work. So what? Try another one. Keep trying. Thomas Edison. <clears throat> the inventor of the light bulb. He said he failed a thousand times before he finally got a light bulb to work. If he was put off by people saying he was crazy or how many times he was failing, we wouldn't have what we have today. Great thinkers, great doers, not just thinkers, but doers, will not be limited by others thinking. They will not be limited by others' thinking. That's where this, this curiosity, imagination, and just determined, being determined to succeed. And there are times when it just won't work. Try it again a different way. But keep trying. That's, that's the punchline to the joke. Keep trying.